Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Ruby Tuesday. I'm Natasha. I'm the guide here at the Cozy Cushion, the sacred space that I hold here in my YouTube channel. So thank you for joining me today. Today I'm going to start a video series on movement is medicine. As a personal trainer, yoga teacher, and breath work instructor, I learned a lot from being in the gym. And one thing that has always served me best in my life is movement and how that movement can become our medicine in life. In today's world, there's so many ideas, thoughts, and energies flying around, sticking to us like glue. So as an intuitive empath with psychic ability and any sensitive person, our world is increasingly overwhelming for so many of us. And that's a sacred medicine I wish to bring to the world and that I wish to share with you friends is the idea that we can all live our best life and our full-time purpose. And it's important to be brave and fearless, even when we're scared. It's when we're scared that sometimes we take movements outside of our comfort zone that later in life really bring us our greatest joys. And so in the Movement is Medicine series, I really want to discuss listening to your physical body's wisdom and the intuition we all have in life. Oftentimes we have these emotions and feelings that are coming directly from our heart but they get stuck in our throat and we're very reluctant to share them with the world. And they can move up into our head and they can really imbalance our whole spirit bodies because those thoughts just thump around and process and try to figure it out. And if we're not voicing them, creating movement in our body and moving things through us, they can really beat us up over time. And that's where my love of all things spiritual uh, and come into play. And what I love teaching most is that we don't have to carry emotions, thoughts, and ideas, especially ones that are really beating us up in our, in our minds and really weighting down our chest and our heart center and slowing down all those spinning wheels of energy in our chakra systems. It's so important and vitally important to move that energy any way we can, every way we can, so that we can live a little brighter and lighter in life. There's so many things in this world that weigh us down. Sometimes the energy, the constant change that's happening around us, dynamics, thoughts, feelings, and emotions changing, not only within us, but within the people that are around us as well. And it brings me to a principle that I feel is very important in today's world. And that is taking action to protect our peace. And very currently in my own life, I had some thoughts, feelings, and emotions that were coming straight directly from my heart. And for a while they were really, I was trying to process them. I was trying to find a place for them in my life. You know, I was asking myself deep questions, you know, is, is this mine? Is this irrational? Is this something that needs to be said or done? And what I found was as time went on, even though I was moving my body, 
the thoughts just went to different places. So there was a period of time they were weighting down my chest and my energy systems and my heart chakra and my abdominal system. The energy stopped flowing there because I was repressing and pushing down these feelings and emotions because I didn't know what to do with them for so long. And with the new moon energy coming, uh, it just wasn't working out for me. You know, we're going to be all moving into new energy, new earth dynamics, whether we like it or not. And I really love talking about these things. And so I've been experiencing some of my own challenges and difficulties. So that's why I'm here today on Ruby Tuesday is just to share my own experiences and how I move through them. And most importantly, being accountable for my presence here on earth, you know, um, it's very important to me, especially this year, I've dedicated my life and heart, body and spirit to getting to know myself completely and fully and accepting myself and loving myself completely and really take action on protecting my peace, feeling my emotions, which I'm not good at. Honestly, I really not good at them. I, I like to avoid them. I like to put them on the back burner. I like to pretend that everything's okay because that worked for a long time with my depression and anxiety is I could very easily pretend that everything's okay. But once I hit a certain age, I knew that if I didn't take action and take accountability and responsibility for my own physical body, my mental body, and my spiritual body, and try my best to live a life of alignment without limitations and be in my full-time purpose so I can create this sacred space for you and I, so we can live our best life together one day at a time, I needed to voice my feelings. I needed to move that medicine that was hitting me in my guts and my heart chakra and going through my mind like this imbalanced washer for day upon day upon day. I needed to, to voice it. I needed to let it out of my physical body and not stuff it down anymore. But most importantly, friends, I needed to figure out a way to do this without an expectation of any outcome. So for some of us, that's not easy. It's not easy for me to share my emotions and feelings from my heart without an income, outcome, you know. So the last few years, I've been really trying my best to, to do this, you know. I have learned some really bad habits in my lifetime, you know. I have a very addictive personality. So the whole first part of my life, I was a very young addict. I was also a very young mom and so I learned some bad habits of managing my anxiety and depression through stuffing feelings and emotions down, becoming a fabulous actress and pretending that life is okay. And it served me in my survival but I'm not in survival mode anymore. I'm okay. I'm safe. I'm really living the best life I can. And, I, and for that, I'm, I'm so grateful. And I'm so grateful that I knew I couldn't do it alone. I knew from day one when I started my journey of recovery and becoming more sober. It, it, it's taken years and honestly, friends, 
it still exists today. I'm still working on it today. Um, and that's what nobody tells you about recovery. That's what nobody tells you about your human spirit is that there's processes to be made. There's energy and medicine and moving through that stuff. And it's scary, it's gross, it can be heavy and yucky. And sometimes it's a lot. And it's important to me to create this sacred space of the cozy cushion so we can talk about that stuff. So I can be a heart-centered mentor if there's anything you ever feel like I can help you with or you want to bounce ideas off of or anything. Um, it's just really important that we all become accountability for our presence here on earth. Because in all actuality, we're here now. We're nowhere else. Right now I am here in my living room. Today is, uh, this is the space that I decided to do my video in. This is my living room with my bookshelf, which I've arranged with all my favorite books that have been fantastic references for my spiritual and mental health and my growth as a human being. Um, so I may share some of those over a period of time, but this month in particular, I'm starting the Movement is Medicine series so that we can start moving on in our lives in little ways. Um, and, and it's going to be different for everybody. So I'm just going to share my personal experiences, some things that are alive for me each Tuesday. And today, what's alive for me is listening to your body's wisdom. So intuition. There's so many things in our life that we know and we don't give it enough credit. We don't give ourselves enough credit to know that we can move through it. That we don't have to pretend it's okay. We don't need to stuff it down until it disappears and it's just gone from the ether. Because what I know for sure, friends, is what we resist will persist. What we don't acknowledge will just become bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's so many examples that I have in my life from my own addictions. Uh, the more I suppressed them and stayed in them, the bigger they got. And uh, so that's, you know, a little bit of what I offer here at the Cozy Cushion is preventative suggestions and ideas to help us process information, to give us spiritual strength, and give us the ability to be completely present here and now as we are in complete, imperfect beings living our best life, you know? And uh, so thank you once again for joining me today. It means the world to me that you come here to engage with me, to watch me, and perhaps learn something from me. And uh, I love the feedback that you have to offer. And I'm really grateful that I get this opportunity to uh, meet with you now every Tuesday. I'm gonna really dedicate myself to these moments because it's really who I wanna be in life. I wanna be a teacher and I wanna be a spiritual guide for those of you that are starting your spiritual journey or you're on your spiritual journey and you're just getting stuck and you're getting hung up in the road and you know I I really love that stuff so I, I know it's my purpose and I really hope that you're seeking out your full-time purpose as well um, so back to the movement is medicine. One of the thing and listening to our body wisdom, my intuition was telling me and sharing with me why I was in resistance, that I needed to voice my emotion and feelings. And I resisted this for a while and I needed to be mentally, physically, and spiritually clear 
about my intention and that my intention was pure and it was coming from a heart-centered space for the highest good of everybody involved. But most importantly, friends, I needed to voice my feelings without any expectation of any outcome. And that's important for building spiritual strength is oftentimes we refuse or we choose not to do things because we fear the outcome. We fear repercussions of speaking our truth because life can be cruel. People can be cruel. People can be defensive and they can, once you voice your true expressions of your feelings and emotions, people can react to that. And, you know, just like everything in life, there's always consequences, you know? And for me, I needed to not beat myself up about what I needed to voice anymore. I was starting to suffer from that. And how I knew I was suffering was my anxiety was getting more out of control. My blood pressure was up again, uh, higher than it, you know, should be because I was suppressing all these emotions and feelings back down into my spirit body and doing the work to bring them up with my breath work only to stuff them back down again and it was becoming a very negative process for my spirit body and I was becoming very sad um, and depressed again so I had to I had to sit with that and so I'm so grateful that I reached out earlier last year to a coaching program and accumulated coaching friends and a coaching tribe uh, to really help me not live in survival mode anymore because that's, I don't want to be there anymore. I don't want to be a slave to my inability to process feelings and emotions and it took me a long time to feel safe. So maybe some of you aren't there yet. And some of those ways that movement can be medicine in your life is if you're in an unsafe environment and you don't have a safe place to feel your emotions, thoughts and feelings. Maybe you can do just one tiny thing a day to make you feel more safe within yourself because that's what it was for me was I needed to trust myself. I needed to be clear on my vision of my life and I needed to take action in protecting my peace because I had worked so hard last year to bring me to a safe place, mentally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. So I did that through breath work for, I did that by being present in my life, by dedicating myself to my own coaching and learning, uh, as well as being present. I, I really made a goal to not suppress and utilize some bad habits whether it be food or other habits, to suppress my inability to voice my, my feelings. And um, I'm not gonna say it's easy, but what I will say is when we know it's time to express ourselves, to stand up for ourselves, to set boundaries for our lives, we really have to face that with certainty as best we can. We need to be fearless and let God take the wheel. We need to be active 
and making imperfect actions, but feel good about our decisions and, and make decisions on a regular basis. And that's been the focus of my personal life the last little while. And so each week I come and just talk to you what's alive in my life. So these are some of the things that are alive in my life and that I'm moving through. And one thing that is really, really beneficial to my spirit and my well-being right now is breath work. And that's just bringing energy and oxygen to my brain, stimulating my vagus nerves, and most importantly, calming my central nervous system. I have an amazing teacher that I have an opportunity to utilize and it's become a great asset. And this teacher asks every time he puts himself out there for us to share what we've learned. And so today I'm just going to share actually three sets of five breath. I, I just need a place to start with you in this movement is medicine series. So we're going to start with just teaching very basic present breath work. It's, it's very gentle, easy on the central nervous system. So it doesn't matter what you've got going on. This is safe for you. I do not want you to do this work if you're driving in the bath, standing in the shower or anything. I want you to find a safe place within your home or not moving in your vehicle, somewhere that's, that's safe that you can just sit with and so we're just going to sit for a moment i just ask that you join me friends because i think it's going to help you find peace in your life and that's my goal is for us to all be a little more at peace so we're just going to sit here if you have a coffee feel free to have a drink if you have a glass of water or something please have a sip this is a very cozy place to be you know and I just want you to enjoy this time with me. All right. So if you have a cushion, you can put a cushion under your bum. I'm just gonna grab mine. I have it here. I have these big pillows. I've been toting around for a long time and they really do uh, bring me great comfort here. All right, so we're just gonna sit on our cozy cushions here. This is my cozy cushion. Whatever way you're comfortable. So if you want to sit with your feet together, uh, relaxing those knees down to the floor, body nice and tall, that's perfect. If you want to lay down, uh, please feel free to do so as well. So now that we're sitting here together, we're just going to do five breaths three times okay so it's just to encourage movement throughout your body bring in oxygen into your body because movement is medicine it's the way we can get well healthy and strong so let's start nice tall body I want you to relax your head and your eyes can close Unclench your jaw and relax it. Shoulders are down and back. Body is tall. Legs are comfortable. Whatever that means for you, you can have them any way you choose. There's really no rules here. So we're going to take five breaths in. When you breathe in, I want you to breathe in through your nose and I want you to breathe directly back into your brain as deeply as you can. Nice breath in. And exhale through the mouth. Inhale in through the nose, back into the brain. Exhale.
in through the nose, back into the brain. Exhale. Last breath in. Nice and deep and exhale. Just sit here for a moment, relaxing the breath, making sure you're breathing in and out. Great work, friends. Going to do it again. This time deeper. Breathe deeper in through the nose. We're going to do it five times. At the end of this five breath, I'm going to instruct you to do something different. We're just going to hold. First breath in. As deep as we can. And exhale. Nice deep breath in to the back of the mind. Exhale. Out the mouth. All the way out, all the air. Nice breath in through the nose. Bringing oxygen to the brain. Exhale. On this last breath in through the nose, breathe as deep as you can, but I want you to hold. And exhale. All the way up. I just want you to notice what you feel. For some of us, it might be not much at all. For some of us, we might notice that cool inhale on the nose. And that warm breath, exhale. Exhale. Beautiful friends. We're going to add one new thing on the last five breath. It's gonna be weird and it's gonna be okay, but I want you, I wanna encourage you to do it with me, you know, because you know how some people hum and whistle why they work and stuff? That movement is incredibly good for our human body. So, with this five breath, we're gonna add on the exhale, we're gonna hum it out. So it's gonna be weird. I want you to stay with me. I want you to do it with me because at the end of the day, it's gonna make things better. So we're gonna do it together. I'm gonna to guide you. We're gonna breathe as deeply as we possibly can. We're gonna sit nice and tall. Our shoulders are gonna be down and back. We're gonna breathe into our mind, bringing beautiful oxygen to our brain in a gentle way. So you don't have to overextend or push or anything, just make it gentle. Five breaths in, in through the nose. Exhale, hum. Uh, In through the nose. Deep as we can. Exhale, hum. Um, all the way out. Inhale. Exhale, hum.
last breath. We're gonna make it big, we're gonna make it deep, and we're gonna hold on the fifth breath. In through the nose. Hold now. And release that hum. Take a moment to sit with me and just notice how you feel. Breathe freely in and out. The reason why I asked you to hum it out today and hold that breath for a moment is because it stimulates our vagus nerve. It calms our central nervous system and it hums those things that stick to us it hums them away from us and it just brings new life to our energy body our physical body our spiritual body and our spiritual being and it can be so powerful in the changes we need to make in our lives and I just wanted to share it with you because it's changed my life for the best. And that's all I want for you, friends, is for us to live our best lives. So I'm gonna end this video with, if you love this video and you haven't sub subscribed, please do. I'm gonna bring uh, the Movement is Medicine series, video two, out next Ruby Tuesday. I'm just gonna plan it as I go and do it for what's live in my life at the time. And I hope that it brings you great comfort and makes you more cozy and secure in your life because that's one of my goals is for us to be cozy and not be fearful and be brave and to share our whole selves and our whole light with the world because there's only one you. And I love you. And I don't think we all hear that enough. So, as some of you know, lately I've been ending my videos with the Hawaiian prayer. And I'm doing this for a reason. And the reason is, we don't hear these words enough. We're not hugging enough. Hugging is sacred medicine, friends. We need more hugs. So if you see your friend at the grocery store that you haven't seen for a while, open your arms for a hug. That's what I want you to do today. Get out there, embrace your life as it is. Say these four phrases with me before we go. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. And thank you. Thank you for staying to the end of this video. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for joining me in my sacred space. Thank you for breathing with me. And most importantly, thank you for being willing to take action on protecting your peace listening to your own body wisdom what we resist will persist what we resist will persist the sooner we deal with it the sooner we voice it 
the sooner we share it, the quicker we can level up in our lives, friends. And that's what we're here to do at the Cozy Cushion. So you take care, have a fantastic day, and you are loved by me.